Hi! In this video, we're going to see some examples of actually where definite integrals show up in business applications. Now, here's an example of what we were calling a continuous income stream. Let's say we have a function r of t, which is defined as the yearly revenue that our company is making in millions of dollars per year. Now the fact that it says yearly revenue instead of total revenue, and that the units on it are millions of dollars per year, is a dead giveaway that this is a derivative type of quantity. You see it's like got y units over x units there. Okay, so when it asks us to find a total revenue over a certain span of time, that means we're going to need to write down a definite integral and integrate this continuous income stream into the total amount made over that period of time. Now let's say this function r of t is given to us as 12.42t plus 31.2. So it looks like we have a linear function for our model. Let's find these quantities and interpret them. The two quantities are the integral from 0 to 2 of r of t dt and the integral from 2 to 4 of r of t dt. And I want you to compute the actual values of both of these integrals. The question is, which integral is larger in its amount and why? How do you know? Now to really challenge yourself, I'd invite you to try to answer this question on the bottom here even before you calculate these quantities. Of course, once you calculate both of these quantities, you'll be able to compare the numbers and answer which integral is larger. But right now, before we do that, which integral is larger and why? What do you think? Well, first of all, let's try to interpret, before we find, let's try to interpret both of these definite integrals. What does it mean for, for the integral from 0 to 2 of r of t dt? That's the amount of revenue, right? That's the total amount of revenue made from time equals 0 to time equals 2. So this integral right here is the total amount of revenue that my company will make, given this continuous revenue stream, um, inside the first two years. And this integral is different because it has different bounds from 2 to 4. So this is the total amount of revenue that my company will make inside of the next two years. So this is from year 0 to year 2, and this is from year 2 to year 4. Okay, that's the interpretation, but which integral is larger and why? You know the answer? Here's a hint. Why don't you graph this amount? Graph the yearly revenue, and then remember what we said about the relationship between definite integrals and the area under the curve of that given graph, and then see if you can figure it out. Okay, so let's see if I can graph this. Um, well, as we said, it looks like it's a linear quantity, so the R of t in millions of years looks like it's got a y-intercept of 31.2, so here's a y-intercept right there, and then it looks like it's sloping up. So over time, it looks like our continuous revenue stream is just going up, 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 and it's increasing at a linear rate. Okay, oh, well, this is actually increasing at a constant rate. But anyway, it's a linear function. Um, so the first integral right here, the integral from 0 to 2 of r dt, that was the amount of area under the curve from 0 to 2. Okay, so this integral right here, the number that we get is going to be the same as the amount of area inside of this trapezoid right here. And then, that's versus the integral from 2 to 4 of r dt. This would be the amount of area in this trapezoid right here. So versus this area right here. Now can you answer the question, which one of these integrals is going to be larger? It's going to be this one, right? Because you can see it has more area under its curve. There's more area under this curve right here than there is under that curve, that part of the curve right there. Um, and why? Why is this larger? Well, that's because when we graph the function, the function was increasing. And so when the function is going up itself, you can be sure that the amount of area under the curve in a, in a, um, on an interval that's farther out in time is going to be larger because the height of the function keeps going up. Okay, now let's show this by actually calculating the numbers for both of those um, integrals and then we're going to compare them. Now once again, I definitely want you to try this on your own before you watch the solution. So now's your chance. Pause the video and go ahead and calculate both of those integrals. Alright, I really hope you're trying this at home. So let's try this first one, the integral from 0 to 2 
of r of t. Actually, I'll just replace it with its form 12.42t plus 31.2 dt. And whenever we have to calculate the integral that's a definite integral, first we're going to find the corresponding indefinite integral, and then we're going to evaluate that at both of the bounds. Okay, so the indefinite integral of this first term right here, since it has a t in it, the t is going to get squared and then divided by 2. Okay, now you can either write it like this, or some people may have just written it just like this. Either way, that's the same thing. Um, and then this next one is just 31.2 as a number, so when we integrate that up, then it's going to have a t on it. And remember, we don't need to write the plus c because this is a definite integral, so we're just going to end up evaluating this at t equals 2, and then subtract the evaluation at t equals 0. Okay, so just to simplify this, this is 6.21t squared plus 31.2t, and then we're going to evaluate that at 0 and 2, and um, it looks like when you evaluate it at 2, you're going to get the number 87.24. And then when you evaluate it at 0, you're going to get 0. So the answer is 87.24. Okay, so if I actually asked you to answer this question including units, what would you say? 87.24 what? Dollars? Years? Miles per hour? Uh... Okay, well the answer is going to be related to whatever was on the top of this fraction right here. Because remember that when you integrate the derivative, you get the corresponding total quantity back. So if this is a derivative quantity, then the units of the total quantity are on top, and the units of the independent variable are on the bottom. And so after we integrate it out, it's going to end up in millions of dollars. So the answer here is 87.24 million dollars. Oh man, that seems like a lot of money. We made 87.24 million dollars um, in the first two years with that con continuous income stream. Okay, so I'm going to write down the answer for that right there. But now let's go and calculate the other integral. For the under integral, we actually don't have to change all of our work. We just have to change the bounds right here. And the improper integral is not going to change at all. However, these numbers will change because we have to evaluate it at 2 and 4. 2 and 4 instead of 0 and 2. Um, and we already actually know some of this, so I want to do as little new work as possible. The evaluation of this number at 2 was 87.24. And then evaluating this function at 4, it looks like we get 1520.64. Whoa, that's a lot more. Um, and then we take the subtraction, and that's 1433.4. And once again, that's going to be in millions of dollars. Okay, so now to compare these. This one was 87.24, and that's versus the other one, which was 1433.4 millions of dollars. And so, in the first two years, we made out pretty good. In the next two years, we made out even better. And remember how that was related to graphing that rate of change, and then considering what was the area under the curve over both of those two intervals. Okay, so let's try one more example. And in this example that I just showed you, we saw a continuous income stream where that stream was always increasing. That means we keep making more and more and more as time progresses. In this next example, I'm going to show you one where we have a continuous income stream, but it's always decreasing. It's always going down. So let's say that we let f of t here be equal to 80e to the minus 0.02t, and this is going to be the income from some new machine, um, a continuous income stream, and in, let's say thousands of dollars per year. All right, once again, units really help to understand what's going on here. This little f of t must be some sort of rate because its units are in thousands of dollars per year. So it looks like it was the derivative of some total quantity describing the thousands of dollars we would make after a certain number of years. 
All right, well, this is actually the income of a new machine that I bought. And if we graph this, notice that this is exponential. It's 80 e to the minus 0.02t. And because this is e to a minus number, that puts me in the exponential decay case, where the y-intercept here is 80. So right when it's brand new, it looks like it's giving me $80,000 per year. But it's changing in a continuous manner. It's giving me less and less stuff over time. Well, it's a new machine, but it's going to get rusty, and it's not going to work as efficiently. And then when you consider the added cost of maintenance, it looks like the amount of income that I'm making off of this machine happens to be decreasing over time. Okay? So now here's some questions. Let's consider these two integrals. The integral from 0 to 10 of f of t dt, and that will be versus the integral from 10 to 20 of f of t dt. I'll start us off with a conceptual question first. Can you interpret both of these integrals? What are these integrals trying to calculate for us? And then, just like last time, which one of them is larger, and why do you think that? Okay, so in order to test yourself, you might want to pause the video here, and when I say interpret, go ahead and write down what you think the interpretation of both of these integrals is. And then also write down your guess for which one will be bigger and why. Okay, I hope you're trying that at home. I'm not going to write it for the sake of time, but I'll just say in words what I think these interpret as f of t is the continuous amount of income that I'm making from the machine. It is in units of thousands of dollars per year, and so these numbers must be in years. So this is the total amount of income that I will receive from time equals zero when I first bought it up until time equals ten years. Okay? The total amount of income that I will receive from the machine in the first ten years. And then, that's versus this one right here, which is going to be the total amount of income that I will receive from the machine from year 10 all the way to year 20. So this is the total income from the first 10 years, and this is the total income from the second 10 years, years 10 through year 20. Alright, so that's probably similar to what you wrote down, hopefully. Um, and then what was your guess for which one of these integrals is going to be larger? Remember how that's related to the area under this curve here? So I can imagine that this is time equals 0, this is 10, this is 20. And you can see that those integrals interpret to the area under this curve. So in the first 10 years, I'm going to make that amount of money, whatever the area is under the curve right there. And then in the next 10 years, I'm going to end up making this amount of money, whatever the area is under that curve. Now, since these two um, subdivisions have the same width, then we can just determine which one has a larger area by the heights. And it looks like this one has more area, and that one has less area, and that's because this continuous income stream is going down in time because of the wear and tear on the machine. Okay, so we will expect that this one has a lower value, and this one has a higher value because f of t is decreasing. But just to confirm it, let's go ahead and calculate these integrals. Definitely pause the video at this point and go ahead and calculate both of these integrals by yourself for practice. Okay, so let's see how you did there. Of course, first thing we're going to want to do is calculate the indefinite integral, 0 to 2 t dt. So I'll do this one a little bit differently than I did the, the last one, um, which is that I would just first calculate the indefinite integral, and then I will take that answer and I will evaluate it from 0 to 10, and then versus evaluating it from 10 to 20. Okay, um, now there's two ways to do this. You could go through a U substitution, and if you chose that route, what would you choose for your letter U? On a U substitution with an exponent exponential integral, you should choose u is equal to the function in the exponent. So if you were going to do a u substitution, your first step would be choosing u is equal to negative 0.02t, and then calculating your du is negative 0.02dt. Okay, and then you could go through all of that, um, and that's one way to do it, but remember that we had a shortcut for these exponential integrals, and the shortcut, besides just taking the 80 right to the outside, was the fact that we know whenever we integrate an exponential, 
it actually doesn't really change it much at all. We still have that same exponential decay rate, but because of the chain rule, or because of the U substitution you might have observed, we have to divide by the corresponding coefficient next to the t in the exponent. Okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and write this down as the answer, and that's the shortcut way to do it, because you know that e to the at integrates to e to the at divided by a. And you'd want to go ahead and check your work, take the derivative of this, and make sure that you get the function that you're asked for, and you will confirm that that is the correct indefinite integral. Now technically, when that integral doesn't have any bounds, I'm going to go ahead and put a plus c because that's plus the constant of integration, but when I evaluate it on bounds, that's going to cancel out. Okay, so let's see, um, I simplified that into negative 4,000 e to the minus 0.02t, and now in order to um, evaluate these definite integrals, I'm going to go ahead and just put the vertical bar that says I'm going to evaluate from 0 to 10, and I'll calculate this one, and then separately I'll do it from 10 to 20, and I'll get the value for that one over there. Now, um, you may be concerned because you have a minus over here, and you might be careful of thinking like, hmm, maybe I should just get rid of that minus because that doesn't look right. Um, but there is indeed a minus sign right here on the 4,000 because I have to divide by minus 0.02 here. But I'm not going to get a negative answer out. You're actually going to see that this function has a smaller value when t equals 10 and a larger value when t equals 0. So when I subtract away this lower bound, I'm going to end up with a positive number. Okay, so let's see how that works out. When I just plug in the numbers, it looks like I get negative 3274.92. And then I have to subtract away, evaluating it there a negative 4,000. You see, and those two minuses are going to turn into a plus, and so all in all I get 725.08. And what's the answer right there? $725.08? Careful with your units. Make sure you check your units on each and every one. That was in thousands of dollars. So the correct answer would be to answer this in thousands of dollars. Okay, that's one way to answer, but what if it said on the test or whatever you're doing, what if it said round to the nearest um, cent? Maybe it says round to the nearest cent. Well then, maybe you shouldn't have rounded this number so fast. And then you'd have to take that number out to a lot more decimal places because you have to multiply this by a thousand. Um, so rounded to the nearest cent, you would have actually got 725 and $76, and then running to the nearest cent, 99 cents. Okay? So depending on what kind of units you have and what kind of rounding instruction you have, you have to be really careful about how much you round it. If it just said, uh, give me the answer to two decimal places, I could have said point to the point oh eight thousands of dollars. If it said round to the nearest cent, then I would have had to take it out to many more decimal places, multiply it by a thousand and then I would have got this answer right here. Alright, well anyway, that's going to be the amount of area here, so that's the area of the curve right here. I'll just put 72508 to be brief. And then we have to find the integral from 10 to 20 and we're going to show that that actually has a smaller value. Okay, let's see. Well, I don't have to change everything I've done here. In order to evaluate this definite integral, I just have to put a 10 and a 20 right there, right? And then I'm going to get the numbers, um, and I've got a negative 2681.28 minus a minus 3274.92, and that looks like 593.64. And once again, that amount is in thousands of dollars. And so when I compare these two areas, how much money am I going to get out of this machine over the first 10 years versus over the second 10 years? You can see that I'm making more in the first 10 years when that machine is nice and new, and I'm making a little less over the next 10 years when that machine starts to get a little old.